Jean-Pierre Lacroix, president of Chicatani Lacroix, a branding and design firm that specializes in brand strategy and integrated design solutions. We're delighted to have all of you here from all over the world present with us. We would encourage questions to make this as interactive as possible. Uh, there will be time at the end, but if you have any burning issues, questions, or need clarity on any points of John Pierre's presentation, please type them in. We're ready, listening, and ready to respond. So if I can hand over to you, Jean Pierre. Well, thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much for joining uh, this presentation. Uh, uh, Brand Vibes actually started um, uh, about uh, 10 years ago, an observation that our organizations um, had to get better efficiency in their marketing communication programs and were evolving beyond um, uh, what I'll call tactical initiatives. And the idea of actually having um, human resources and sales and marketing and product development all work together uh, was emerging as a trend. And that's how we captured this in this presentation. I'm going to walk you through some of the insights. So just down here, move my slides. So when you look at uh, the marketplace today, uh, what you see is a lot of confusion. Um, Consumers are on autopilot where, you know, when you go to a supermarket or you go to a bank, um, uh, your, your mindset is in a transaction mode. You're really not there to build a relationship. Uh, there's actually a recent article in the Harvard Business Review uh, about simplicity and, and how that really talks to uh, what consumers are looking for. Uh, you know, the challenge is awareness breaking through in the marketplace. Uh, most organizations are in silo structure and I'm sure that uh, all of you on the phone have lived through this where uh, sales and marketing are not talking to each other. If they are, it's tactical in nature. Product development is on their own. Very seldom do you see finance getting involved in the process. And, uh, and because uh, conventional marketing um, has uh, limited measures, uh, you're really not getting a clear uh, direction of uh, the effectiveness of the program. What we're evolving to is this idea of simplicity you know, this complexity of choice, making the buying easier for consumers. We're trying to be more intrusive. Uh, we call that disruptive uh, uh, approach to communication. That means uh, that we're trying to change the behavior of the consumer. And to do that, um, you can't do it subtly. You really need to um, engage them in a way that disrupts their current thinking. And, and we're trying to move from awareness, really, to creating brand loyalty. And, uh, and obviously, organizations are rethinking the way they structure and go to market and look at much more integrated approaches. And uh, today, with the advent of social media, uh, we, uh, we see um, the growth of dashboards in the marketplace. And that's all leading to stronger brand loyalty uh, with a fickle consumer. So what are the factors uh, that you, we need to take into consideration when, when you look at these shifts in the marketplace and, and trying to build this affinity for the consumer? Uh, the first thing is balancing uh, brand equity uh, versus sales. Uh, organizations are, are looking at creating a communication strategy and a go-to-market plan that really leverages the brand uh, and, and leverages that brand in a way that uh, delivers incremental sales. And, and there's always that just a position of, you know, what's the long-term plan uh, for a communication marketing program versus the short-term tactical sales requirements because we have to submit earnings to the uh, stock market, you know, every quarter. And so it's finding that balance. And, and the leaders in the marketplace have, have developed a strategy that allows that balance to happen in the marketplace, both short-term gains and long-term uh, brand building. Uh, Vibes is all about uh, supporting a big brand idea. And uh, later on, I'll show you some examples of that. But it's really about creating a single-minded approach to the marketplace uh, that you can wrap all of your uh, marketing communication promotional strategies, your go-to-market strategies around one single theme. Uh, and the reason why that's important is, as you can appreciate, the marketplace is very complex. There's a lot of clutter and confusion. And, uh, and for you to stand out, for a brand to stand out, it has to stand for one single idea. And it has to deliver that consistently over time through all its uh, consumer touch points. 
You know, I always said that the uh, best way to get into uh, through uh, 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 customers' pocketbook is through their heart, and the most effective vehicle to do that is visuals. And and so, Brand Vibe is really about owning a key visual, something that you can leverage through all your communication touch points. To a certain degree, it's you know it's visual communication that we're we're reinforcing uh, to build that emotional connection with the consumer, and it's really paying a lot of attention to what that visual communicates to your target audience and what it stands for and the longevity of that visual cue and, and how you can leverage it. Factor number four is uh, uh, we have an acronym called ACT. ACT is uh, how we engage consumers uh, with brands. And so uh, it's broken down, but it basically attract, connect, and transact. And that follows very much the consumer uh, behavior of cognitive, effective, and cognitive. And so what we're trying to do is create this awareness um, of the brand and, and the brand proposition and the brand value in a way that's meaningful to the target group. And we're doing that in a way that uh, we want to connect in a disruptive way. We want to make the consumer think about and engage the consumer in a different way. Only by doing that can we get them to the transact uh, mode. And so it's really understanding how your communication strategy and your go-to-market strategy uh, has to be structured around these three pillars that it isn't one consistent um, go-to-market strategy or one cons uh, consistent communication strategy. Uh, it's looking at how you can create that uh, attract, uh, disrupt their attention, you know, how you can use Connect, which is really leveraging knowledge and, and empowering the consumer to make the buying, the right buying decision, and the transactions. How do you create that relationship that has a customer coming back over and over again? Factor number five that we looked at uh, in Brand Vibes is uh, it's really, uh, you know, and, and it's the advent of social media, um, the fact that consumers now rate products in the marketplace, uh, rate companies, uh, they evaluate the performance of the companies, and they also are very vocal uh, when a company is not delivering on their brand promise. The idea here is to create brand advocates, to create a, a social uh, platform, a community, if you like, of of uh, committed um, consumers who are loyal to the brand to talk about the brand. And the, what you want to do is create a Brand Vibes initiative that allows a platform for them to participate and own part of that communication and that relationship and, uh, and, and to ensure that that follows through not only from an external stakeholder standpoint, i.e. consumers, but an internal stakeholder uh, platform. We're seeing, for example, the use of social media for our clients uh, in the use of uh, in, you know training and uh, employee engagement initiatives, allowing access to information quickly and less reliance on management involvement in communicating some of the insights and some of the requirements. Very important. I wrote a book called The Belonging Experience about uh, two years ago, and, and it's all about brand engagement and uh, and and 35 years in the business looking at how consumers engage in brands. I came out with this uh, model, um, and we, uh, basically it's a brand engagement model, um, and we look at three dimensions of brand engagement. Uh, we look at the process, the message, and the structure. In most companies uh, where uh, brand engagement initiatives fail, is they, they focus too much on the message and not enough on the, the structure and the process. So the process could be the steps a consumer takes. Uh, to build a relationship with your brand or to buy a product from you or to uh, get uh, services from you. Uh, structure could be your portfolio structure. It could be um, how you uh, break uh, your product offerings in different consumer segments. But it's important that all three of these work together because the consumer, from a standpoint of how they interact with brands, they start with a need, a customer need. And the customer needs to be delivered uh, through what I call a control sharing mechanism where you're allowing the consumer to make the right buying decision. And that it then evolves into a relationship building initiative through the structure and the process that you're delivering on the brand promise in a consistent way. So Brand Vibe looks at all of these dimensions. It looks at how you go to market your process, how the customer interacts with your brand, what are the key messages that are key at the moments of truth within that, that journey with the customer. And then it looks at the structure, the offerings, uh, the staff support, um, uh, sales support that would deliver that brand promise. So very important. And then we also look at uh, the fact that uh, it 
it has to be fully integrated. And it's a model here that we create that looks at how people interact with brands. You know, as we know, most um, consumers do their research online through social media and online networks, um, or uh, will contact friends, have conversations, uh, so that they make the right buying decision. And it's an insight where we do. We work with a lot of retailers, uh, both uh, in Canada, and the U.S., and abroad. And uh, the challenge for the frontline staff of retail operations, even in the banking industry, is that the consumers coming into the store more qualified, more knowledgeable than the frontline staff. And so, how do you leverage that uh, from a from a customer touch point and building relationships with the frontline staff? You have visibility, physical experience, the transaction, the service, of product to support. And obviously, how the consumer uses it in in their homes. And we also look at you know from from the fact that consumers are coming in with a task, and and how we convert that into value and into a community, and then leverage that knowledge and deliver it on aspirations. So this model looks at kind of the journey a consumer has in building a relationship and affinity program with a brand, and how you can use marketing communication elements to deliver that throughout. This is my favorite slide, factor eight, is really defined target groups. You know, we, um, we often um, look at the marketplace as a demographic psychographics. Um, we believe that uh, that model is changing. We know it's changing. We're, in the last uh, two or three years, we've redefined that for most of our clients. Uh, and what we're looking at is what are the communities? You know, what are the um, segment of consumers that share common values and needs that we can fulfill, and, and how do we talk to those common values and needs in the marketplace? Um, they, they could be lifestyle needs, uh, they could be needs uh, of empowerment, and, and the community's uh, insight there is that communities typically cross a lot of age groups and, and income levels uh, because they're driven by needs, not driven by age and, uh, and income. And so when you're looking at brand vibes, it's very important to understand what community are you targeting and, uh, and, and what value can that community bring to your business for, and what value can you give that business. And so redefining the target groups is an important role. This is uh, what I, I believe is kind of the critical juncture, juncture of, uh, uh, of living the brand promise and delivering. Uh, it could be um, a frontline staff, it could be uh, someone answering the helpline. Um, it's, it's imperative that it, within Brand Vibes, if it's, it's a vertically integrated brand engagement strategy, and the engagement part is getting a relationship built, that the staff are clearly aligned with uh, the needs and, and behaviors of the, uh, the customer, the consumer, the communities. And it's, it, I would say that today, in the last five years, and moving forward, more and more organizations are spending uh, a significant amount of money, disproportionate amount of money, on uh, training their staff, and uh, because they understand that to build relationships in a offline world, in other words, in a physical world, uh, that the role of the frontline staff, the employee, is much more critical today than was ever before, uh, because they no longer own the knowledge. The consumers are coming in empowered. Uh, their role has shifted, and, and there's a required uh, shift in training and behavior if uh, brands are going to succeed in, in the physical world. And so uh, staff alignment is very important at all levels. And then last factor is really measurable uh, that, uh, you know, uh, we see and you, I'm sure here in, in your presentations, you know, fact-based decisions and, and what's my return on investment on my marketing initiative. And, and the beauty today is that um, it, it is a lot easier to measure those than ever before. And so building a case for how these initiatives uh, are going to deliver a higher ROI, I would say that five years ago when we, we, uh, we started assignments, uh, clients would never talk to us about ROI. Our first assignment where a client actually built into the contract a return on investment was uh, International Dairy Queen, where we had to deliver a 17% return on investment in what we were doing for them. And, uh, and you're seeing more and more organizations going to their marketing partners and asking for an, an understanding of what the rate of return is going to be on their initiatives. And so measurable becomes an important factor in brand vibes. So inspirations, 
you know, when you look at the marketplace, there are a lot of companies that are, are developing uh, brand vibes. They may not have defined it as a brand vibe. I look at Dulux, their Color of the World initiative that's a global initiative. Uh, but I believe that where this started uh, is uh, with this brand here, uh, Dove Soap. Um, Dove was in a commodity category. Uh, private label uh, was uh, having a significant impact on their market share. And, and um, this initiative actually started in Europe. And uh, they really defined what Dove st stood for and what was the big brand idea. And the big brand idea was uh, this concept that um, that the media had created stereotypes of, uh, of what a woman should be. And uh, through an initiative that was focused all around um, you know, your inner beauty, uh, they were able to communicate uh, and, and build a community and a community tools through their website, their advertising, that really talk to this need state. And when you talk about this community, the community was actually uh, mothers, at all ages and their daughters, and so this community had a very specific need, and um, and the need was um, that they should be proud and confident about the way they look, and that they shouldn't be judged by how the media had stereotyped them. And uh, as you know, this program became extremely successful. It uh, was then launched in Canada and the U.S., and uh, for many years, um, um, you know, was able to build this online community and this community of consumers who, who, um, who gained insights and, and, and understanding of uh, that, that uh, they don't need to be stereotyped. And so the brand vibes is all about understanding how these, this one single idea gets translated across all of the moments of truth of the brand. What does a green chair have to do with banking? Uh, TD. Um, uh, is a, uh, I think, the sixth largest uh, bank in North America. It's Canada's second largest financial institution. You would know it in the UK, TD uh, Waterhouse. Uh, in the US, there's also TD Ameritrade. Um, it, the company emerged uh, through, uh, or evolved through a merger between the Canada Trust and TD. And um, the key visual of the chair uh, ties into their proposition. And their proposition is all about comfort. Uh, they own comfort, uh, that banking could be this comfortable, that everything we do is like around this sense of comfort, that we're going to make your life easier, uh, simpler, uh, more comfortable. Uh, you're going to feel more confident in your uh, banking decisions uh, through the branch. And so we evolved this program, everything from marketing communications, their branch design, uh, to their brand standards, everything really integrated around that single focused idea. And on this slide, you can see that uh, they've leveraged a the chair, and the chair is evolving as we speak. And the challenge, uh, this this chair concept actually program is uh, now about uh, 12, 14 years old. Uh, and so, how do you keep the program fresh? Uh, it's been very successful in the marketplace and continues to drive uh, that. Um, affinity for the brand through an understanding of its single uh, benefit, which is about comfort. About a year ago, we were asked to redefine comfort uh, as it relates to the banking experience. And I'm going to walk you through a, a video here. And this video uh, talks to uh, the program that was launched last year, which is redefining the uh, bank experience. And we wanted to create this uh, new experience right from the outside in from a standpoint of large windows and inviting environment, a place where people can uh, um, go and have a cup of coffee and spend time relaxing, uh, let's say that while they're, the spouse is doing some banking or you're doing some banking. Uh, we wanted to humanize the bank, so we really wanted to bring the customer service right up front, so instead of behind glass doors, uh, we had customer service care right at the front. At the uh, teller line, we created seating and an area where people can uh, relax while they're waiting to, uh, for the teller line because 80% of transactions in Canadian banking happens at the teller line. So we just want to create an environment here that was comfortable uh, and easy for them to use from online banking here to uh, a waiting place for the uh, meeting with the wealth managers. 
we created an environment here, for example, uh, where you can come in and, and um, uh, have your coins uh, converted to, uh, to, uh, in, into your bank account. Uh, and this service was offered for free. And uh, it was uh, used and developed so that children actually could do it. And it became part of the community involvement. In some of these branches, we created a kids area. And in each branch, we create a community wall with the introduction of digital signing. Um, and you can see a little camera at the top of the sign. We actually track how people view the screens, how long they look at them. And, uh, and again, we create an environment that talks to the brand, which is all about comfort. Another program we've done, in, and this one's in the US, um, this little character is a digi. And uh, Cox Communication is one of the largest wireless cable company, or sorry, cable companies in the U.S. and they embarked on a wireless license. And uh, we were fortunate enough to work with them at, at developing the brand communication program through all the consumer touch points uh, from, from their digital media to, uh, to uh, their promotional communication. Uh, and this was all part of a platform to create a, a bricks and mortar experience for the consumers. And, uh, and I'm going to walk you through another video here that talks about this program. So yeah, Cox uh, got into the uh, wireless business uh, last year. Uh, and uh, the, the concept was to really showcase uh, in an interactive way all of the services that they offer. And you can understand that uh, their business model historically was a bill payment um, store. So consumers come in and pay their bills. And uh, we had to shift that behavior and much based uh, helping consumers understand how they can take the best of their technology. The Digi is all about your friend in the digital age. It's all about this um, you know, brand advocate that's there to help you uh, make the right buying decisions from buying mobile solutions to, uh, to a variety of other services from cable to high-speed internet. And obviously, the Digi plays an important role in premiums and communication on the digital signs. And uh, this program has been extremely successful. This program was rolled out to about 150 locations across the US. And we're doing another 50 this year. But it's all about this creating this uh, unified, vertically integrated brand strategy that is consistent across all the consumer touch points from their website to their uh, physical asset. The last case study I'm going to uh, walk you through is Granite Toy. And Granite Toy is owned by Office Max. Granite Toy is Canada's uh, second largest office supply retailer, uh, business to business. And uh, the challenge was Staples came into the marketplace and, uh, and dominated uh, through larger stores, whereas Granite Toy historically were small stores, uh, but half the size of a, uh, of a Staples. And so we redefined the business model for them. Uh, we identified the Soho customer, the Soho community, if you like, as um, the target group we want to go after. And we built everything from product offerings to the online web presence to the physical stores to specifically talk to the needs of the Soho, the small office, home office, consumer or community. And uh, everything we built uh, from a standpoint of staff uh, training to uh, product offering to, uh, to marketing communication material was singly focused around this one idea of how Grand and Toy can make your life easier uh, if you're a small business. And, uh, and the program uh, included a, uh, an extensive uh, staff training program because we had to uh, change the behavior of the staff to understand uh, that they were selling knowledge and empowerment, not products. And this program now is in its second year, and uh, it continues to grow significantly. Uh, same store sales uh, are significantly higher than uh, than, than even what was uh, planned in the, in the budgets. So that showcases, there's many more. If you looked at uh, IBM, uh, the Smart Planet, there's another great example of, uh, of a brand vibes where they've fully integrated their entire story around one key message, uh, both how they hire to how they go to market, how they communicate in the marketplace, and, and how they build their portfolio of services and products on how to meet the needs of a smarter planet. So I'll talk quickly about process, if I may. Um, Jean-Pierre, yeah. if I can just interject to this point, we've had a really sure. interesting question from Alison here, who's just saying um, many of the examples are retail. Could you maybe give um, an example of how this can work in a services business? 
Well, I would say uh, I, uh, I would uh, thank you for asking, and you know, in in light of uh, shortening the presentation, I took some of the examples out. If, like I said, uh, if you look at IBM Smart Planet, uh, they created six platforms uh, that align to how they make uh, you know the planet smarter from traffic to uh, water purification to running office more efficiently. Uh, they've done a great job of of uh, of building that platform uh, to to um, align their staff uh, and their staff behavior to the marketplace's needs, and so that would be a, a, a you know, um, IBM Smart Planet would be a great great example of an organization that's service uh, that's selling products and services, not retail uh, assets, would be a, another great example of that. And obviously, Thank it does you. so. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good. So, planning process. Just uh, some quick uh, quick tips here, uh, thoughts. Uh, I think it starts with establishing a big idea, and and very often we we work with the client understanding um, what is uh, your brand essence. You know, what's the brand DNA, and how does that translate into a big idea? And that's where we start. And so it's looking. In a lot of cases, it's actually reevaluating. Uh, your brand card and and your brand DNA and, and ensuring it's relevant to your target group. Uh, it's very important to write off the outset. What are the metrics? You know, what are the what's the ROI you're looking to accomplish? What are the key metrics you're trying to accomplish in this brand vibes vertically integrated brand engagement strategy? And how are you going to deliver those? And and what are your assumptions that build along that? It's very important because it's what's going to drive the funding of your program uh, within your organization. And then this idea of integration of tools, uh, you know, it's looking at how do all of these uh, vehicles uh, align and are integrated to support that big brand idea and ensuring that, that these tools are used for the right reasons uh, and, and for the full impact of them. You know, and then it's all about, um, we call it legs. You know, does the program have legs? Does it have longevity? Um, you know, can we extend this program in year five, year six, year seven? If you look at IBM Smarter Planet, it's now been about 10 years that they've launched that program, and it still has as much relevancy today as it did, you know, 10 years ago. So what, but how do you keep it fresh? You know, and if you're going to add new services, you know, what is, uh, the, you know, how does this platform allow for those new services or products? And that, importantly, it's also look at an exit strategy. In other words, when this program, you know, runs its course, and it could, it could take, you know, in the case of uh, the green chair for TD, it's, I guess it's about 15, 12 to 15 years old, how do you, how do you exit that strategy and, and, and evolve it so that uh, you still maintain that equity? And here's a map of uh, kind of all of the different factors that you may want to take into consideration for the big, for this uh, vertical brand engagement strategy. Everything from online, offline, HR, you know, marketing communication. So this becomes a, a map that you need to understand where all of these pieces come together uh, to support the big brand idea. And that's it. Uh, that's uh, my presentation. I welcome any comments or questions that you may have. Uh, you can also visit SL Design Lounge, where we have a variety of other white papers uh, on uh, for anything from shopper marketing to the trends in the marketplace. That's great. Thank you so much, Jean-Pierre. I have a, a question here. Um, you alluded to it in the last slide, and the question came in, so maybe our uh, participants happy with the slide you showed. But I'll ask the question anyway, but her question was, can you give any advice on working across the silos? In the internal business, and oh, what yes. structures have worked in other organizations? Yeah, so so that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. <clears throat> you got to you got to establish a cross divisional team. So first, you need to have the buy in at the senior management level, uh, from the president down. You need to have uh, an agreement that uh, that brand vibes needs to happen, and that there's a mandate uh, because without the endorsement of uh, the senior leadership team in, in your organization, uh, you're going to be fighting uphill because the challenge you're going to have is conflicting schedules, conflicting agendas, um, time allocation and resources. They need to have a dedicated team for brand vibes. 
for the kickoff and integration of the program. So typically it takes six months to eight months for this to take, take life. And so top leadership mandate, task force, where a significant amount of their time is allocated to the project. It's not like, well, I'll fit you in. You have a project charter uh, that uh, the, manage, the senior management team need to sign. Uh, this project, project charter has the responsibilities, their roles, the deliverables, the metrics, and, and the task force members need to sign the charter. Uh, because by signing it, there is a you know, technically a contractual agreement that they're going to put the commitment time. And then it's about really uh, delegating uh, and dividing the responsibilities and then having weekly status meetings and we find those weekly status meetings very important because people tend, you know, it's human nature, you tend to wait a day before the status meeting to get your work done, but at least if you're breaking it on a weekly basis, things don't get out of line. So, that, so those would be the, the steps that we co constantly take. I mean, we're doing a major program right now in the U.S. for, for an organization, and, and that's the first thing we did is we got uh, everyone to sign off on the charter. We got the senior leadership team to ensure that the people working on the team uh, um, had time commitments to, to the program. Great, great question. Uh, we've learned a lot about some really good successes, Jean-Pierre. Uh, a question here is, can you, you give some examples of some real brand disasters? I don't think, you know, because this brand vibes is fairly new in the marketplace. I haven't seen um, initiatives that have gone astray. Uh, so I don't have any, uh, at the top of my mind, I don't have any that have gone um, awry in, in a marketplace. Uh, like I said, you know, if you look at the industry at large and you look at this model, there's only four or five companies uh, doing that effectively today. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, uh, and we're hoping to see more and more of these. Great. Rajesh, I hope that answers your question. Um, in terms of the experience, the belonging experience, and, and your book, um, I'm sure, is making a huge impact in your communities, um, are these strategies uh, appropriate to all countries and cultures? So if we take the fast-growing economy as the BRICS, for example, um, is, is, is this appropriate to all cultures, or are there adaptations that would need to be made? The, if you follow the principles of uh, the, of the playing experience and brand vibes, it applies to every country. Every country, uh, it's we all have a human need. Uh, the role of a brand vibes understand how that need forms a community, and how we as brand marketers can answer that need. And so that's you know from Mumbai, India to you know to uh, Hong Kong to to you know Paris. Um, if, you know, identifying that need for that consumer um, becomes important because it's the foundation of everything you do in Brand Vibe. So, no, I think it, it, the principles apply in any country. There are nuances based on what the consumer or the target group need states are. Okay, great. A question here from Rod on what makes a message intrusive? How does this make a difference? Oh, great. Well, uh, you really, uh, so there's two sides to this. Um, one is that it has to talk to the heart, it really has to talk to the heart uh, of the target group. It really has to pull the heartstrings, either from an aspirational standpoint, in other words, something I can achieve, or from an emotive standpoint, this is how it makes me feel. You know, if you look at the Dove program, it really talks to the aspiration and also the heart. Uh, and so, that I'll say that's kind of the delivery. How you how you execute it um, depends on how involved and engaged the consumer is in in the messaging. And what I mean by that is, you take banking. Uh, yeah, consumers are on autopilot when they go into a branch, or they go banking online. Uh, they're task oriented, and so to you really need to disrupt their behavior to get their attention. So if it's a ritualistic transaction, you need to disrupt them. If it is an occasional transaction or occasional interaction with a the brand, then you've got opportunities there to be less disruptive. And so it's, it's on that continuum. Fantastic. Thank you. Another question here is in selling upward to leadership, 
Um, could you expand a little bit more on the ROI measurements um, in terms of internal selling of such a project? Well, there's two. Yeah, well, that's another great question. So there's two dimensions of of metrics. You know, there is the uh, and and we all have them. Uh, you know, they're brand tracking reports you, you get quarterly. They typically are tied into your advertising marketing initiative because that's the department that has the budget for that. And so, so I'll say there are um, what I'll call conventional metrics, which are you know retention, intent to purchase, affinity for the brand, awareness, you know, all of these metrics. But I call them soft metrics because they you know they haven't proven to deliver sales on the short term. Yeah, they delivered sales long term. So, so the hard metrics are um, return on investment, ROI. So for the hundred dollars, let's say a million dollars I'm spending, what is my sales lift going to be uh, versus if I hadn't spent that money? And and that's one of the metrics uh, uh, the senior leadership team are looking at. For example, we're doing a project right now where uh, we're we're actually looking at the um, financial. Uh, of the entire project and looking at what the investment cost is and, and, and what the rate of return and what the expected sales are. That's one of the hard metrics. Some of the other hard metrics that you can use is engagement. Um, in some, uh, for example, how many consumers have gone to the store and visited or have gone to your website and, and downloaded the information. And so those are the harder, uh, I'll call the hard metrics, where you can actually monitor clicks, you can monitor intent, um, and you can actually see sales performance happening. So it's both soft and hard. Mm. That was a good question. Thank you so much. Um, any more questions coming in? I have one more here um, ready to ask to uh, Jean-Pierre. But if there is any last um, question, burning question that anybody would like to ask before we complete our seminar, um, please email in and, and we will ask the question directly. Um, Finally, uh, our last question here is from Margaret. For low-cost products, is brand affinity more important than cost? That's a great question. We're actually doing a major. Yeah, we're we're actually doing a major private label program in um, in the health category. Um, so think of uh, think of um, think of value. Because uh, uh, there's this big market shift, and I don't think it's a trend. I think this is like this is a real. This is a new reality. We have to live with it. Uh, think of value as the foundation of of your program. It's 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 not an option, but it's a given. In other words, um, it's not what's going to differentiate you. It's what's expected, and so you always need to talk to the value proposition, uh, which is part money, what I'm going to pay for, but also values is the intangibles, which it could be about convenience, you know, TD is all about comfort, well, it's, they have the best online banking system in the world, you know, that's all about value. And so, but that becomes the foundation of your house. And then brand vibes is really what's the differentiating factor on top of that that's going to separate you from your competitors that's going to build a, a community of uh, loyal brand uh, uh, followers. Fantastic. Well, we have no other questions coming in. So on behalf of our community, Jean-Pierre Lacroix, thank you so much for a most stimulating, interesting learning experience. To all of our community and members of our AMBA global community, if you want to find out more, Belonging Experiences, a guide to designing and engaging communities for brands is out and available for you. So we are hugely privileged to have had your time, Jean-Pierre. Thank you to all of our AMBA members for joining us here today. And we look forward to you joining our next webinar in a month's time. The slides will be available, sent out to you by link for all those who participated. So on behalf of the Association of MBAs, a huge thank you, Jean-Pierre. And we look forward to engagement in the future. Thank you, Bye. and goodbye. Bye, Bye now. Bye-bye.